everybody knows that civil service is a civil service examination process is very uh, dicey and very uncertain uh, and therefore so it's a it's a little uh, is it audible piche on kya hai i think should i uh, hold this in the hand nahi ya to yahan se on nahi kiya hoga you see on abhi hello audible manu nahi to fir isko off karke you are comfortable yeah, yeah i think comfortable with this maybe i think my position yeah. so ma'am was saying that i wrote my i mean i started preparing for psir after my prelims uh, so in that context i wanted to explain that civil services is a very dicey very uncertain examination sometimes you expect something and something else happens uh, when i started preparing for it i i had this small thing in my mind that i want to give my best in whatever whatever i am doing i think some people feel that they'll prepare for the next attempt and that attempt is going to be very important for them but for me it was it was now or never and with that spirit i i started with the psir coaching after my prelims even though i knew that i was far far behind a number of other people who were preparing for the examination but but i think that grit and that that momentum uh, that you that you get during during the examination process actually takes you through through the exam uh today i think however the, the discussion would be more focused on the interview interview as a as a process so uh, first of all a few words about the interview which i feel is it's not really a test of your personality which a lot of people say uh, a lot of people would say that interview is a test of your personality your personality is already decided and you can't change your personality i actually do not uh, uh i mean feel that that narrative is right i feel that it's more of a performance that you give in a particular environment uh, and that is why people score very differently in an interview process in different for, let's say somebody is given a interview for some exam a and exam b during that same year but he'll have different scores so if that was to be a a check of your total personality then i think you should be getting same marks but it's it's more of the performance you give that day for example stage artists who go to a stage and they perform in a specific uh, period of time and they come out with uh, come out with their personality i think in the same way interview is a process which which basically where 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 the upsc gives you marks after 30 minutes of your uh, 30 minutes of your interaction with them Yeah. So, I I hope now I'm audible. Yeah. Uh, so, what I feel is that it's more like a thirty-minute performance for which you have to go to the uh, interview panel and you have to tell whatever you've uh, whatever questions that they ask you. Uh, so, what I feel is that you can also build on certain things which can improve your score in the interview. It's not just about that your personality will get tested and your personality is already ascertained and therefore you will get marks on the basis of what your personality is and therefore there's therefore there's no room of improvement there are ways in which you can improve your score so that is the first thing before going into uh, a substantive of uh, substantives of what an interview is i'll just give a brief introduction about uh, about what i've what i've done in the what i've done in the uh, uh, career so i gave the 2016 edition of the upsc exam uh and that time i secured 20 uh, 206 marks in the interview which were close to the national uh, highest 209 were the highest marks that that time and my marks in comparison to many others were far less in the top 10 in the top 10 i think my mains marks were the lowest uh, that year but it was the interview that really propelled me so with this example i am telling and trying to emphasize that interview plays a very important role in deciding which service you get and if there is a dream service like an ias ifs or an ips then interview something that can take you closer to that to that ambition that you've set in your life uh after the uh, after the interview as ma'am has already uh, uh, conveyed i joined the indian foreign service 
uh, I then did a one-year training at the Foreign Service Institute where uh, I was adjusted as the best officer trainee uh, in the in the uh, during the training phase. Later, I spent two years in China where I was dealing at uh, political relationship between India and China. And subsequently, I joined the Disarmament and International Security Affairs Division uh, in the ministry, which deals with India's engagement with IAEA. You would have heard about international export control regimes like Basinar, Australia Group, etc. So that is the sort of work that uh, I currently deal in the ministry. Uh, now I would take you to the... Uh, the, the substantives of the interview. So interview basically has two parts. One is the groundwork and the second is how you present yourself in the interview uh, interview stage. So as far as the groundwork is concerned, I think it starts right from the point you fill your DAF. Every noun or everything that you write in the DAF is, is, a, is an invitation for them to ask questions on. And that information is something that you are giving to the UPSC panel. And since you are giving it to them, they feel that it should be truthfully given to them and therefore they can ask questions. So in case you've given some information which is not correct or which is not truthful and if they happen to ask questions on that and you're not able to substantiate, then they will not take a good impression of you. So my first suggestion to all of you who's feeling deaf is be very truthful in what you write. Those people uh, have spent 35 years, more than my age, 35, 36 years being in the public service. So when they look at somebody's face, they're able to tell whether they've actually done it or not. There are two benefits of it. I think the first benefit is you get relaxed, that you don't have a, a great deal of expectations. If you're, if you're not truthful about it, it will always be clicking in your mind that you've not been very truthful about it. And there's a, there's a chance that you might not be able to substantiate some question that they're asking. So... In that particular respect, I would advise all of you to fill information which, which you have really done and which you can really substantiate there. Maybe you have done more number of things. You can cut them down because you will also eventually need to prepare them before you, I mean, write in the diaph and then you go for the interview. But you should perhaps not write beyond what you've done. So that is the first advice. Uh, second, I would say that when you fill the diaph, every small word that you write, basically you have a proper rough book and you write six to seven pages on every small noun. Let's say you belong to city X and for that city X, just write seven pages, six or seven pages where you will write, where you will collate factual information about that particular thing you've written in the diary. For example, I belong to city X. Now I'll go, I'll check the demographics of that city X. Then I will check the population of it. I'll check various societal problems that that city has, developmental issues that has. So in those six, seven pages, you, you will collate and accumulate some factual information uh, on, on variety of these things that you would have written in the DAF. And then I think could be your educational institution, the degree that you've done. For Let's say if there's somebody who's done a medical degree, then you can prepare maybe let's say two pages on every subject that, that you've learned. So that if a question is asked, you at least have a factual primer information that you can then bind around a, an analytical point and then present it to, to the examiner. So my uh, suggestion would be that, that, you, that you have a factual information with you and you complete, a, complete that rough book and then you keep on revising that rough book around 10 times, 15 times. So that when they ask a question, you already know that you have some information in your mind about it. And therefore it doesn't put you in a difficult situation reiterating that information which is already in your mind. So that is just to make sure that you are comfortable with it. For example, they ask which are the areas, I mean, which are the places or national monuments that, that one can go and visit in your city. You should be aware of it. And let's say that discussion opens up. They ask you, oh, this is a national monument. Please let us know the history of the national monument. Then it goes beyond and beyond and beyond. So you should be in a position, if you, if you do that sort of groundwork, which is around six, seven pages on every small word that you've written in DAF, you would have a greater probability to answer the questions which are asked in the uh, asked in the interview. Uh, so this is as far as DAF is concerned. Uh, I have already told you that in terms of your hobbies, your achievements, don't write anything beyond which you've not done. Because what happens is, see, they will ask you a question. On that question, you'll answer something. From your answer, they'll pick another question. And from that question, you'll answer, then they'll pick another question. And if you keep on building this thing, Basically, you are moving towards greater score in the interview. 
if you are able to create a rally of questions around a particular topic and invite their interest to ask further questions, then I think your probability of getting better marks will increase. So a rally is important. You give an answer, they invite. A, I mean, they ask you a question. From that question, you will. I mean, answer something. From that answer, they will again ask a question. So if you are able to create a to and fro, that means they are interested to ask you further about it, and your chances of getting a better score also increase. Uh, apart from the main syllabus, which I think everybody would have done who's going for the interview, I would say that current affairs becomes a little important. Uh, because those issues are a little more contemporary and they would have also read something, let's say before the interview, they would have read something in the interview and they, they would ask you and write your response on it. So current affairs becomes an important part. Uh, uh, I think you can, you can avoid spending a lot of time revising prelims and mains uh, focus. For example, they might not be interested to know about medieval history if let's say history is not your optional. So they might not ask you that question. So your chances where they will ask you more questions is, is perhaps current affairs and what you've written in the app. Obviously, it is very difficult to anticipate where your interview would go because interview is seen as a very subjective process. So you can't really say where it will go, but your intention is to increase your chances of giving them a good answer whenever you post with it. Uh, apart from this, I would also share a few thoughts about how presentation is a little important in the, in the exam. The first thing is you, you can, when they ask you a question or on something, just wait before that question is completed. Don't just rush off to an answer and knowing because you, you would have prepared on something and you would be keen to give them an answer there and there itself. Just wait for two, three seconds or maybe four seconds. Uh, give them the due respect uh, in terms of they, them asking a question and that inviting a response from you. So that is the first thing. Second is, do not, uh, this is what I feel is that uh, do not get into very emotional uh, debates on something. At least this is something which I did in my interview. I, I wanted to come out as a very balanced uh, and an objective in, in my assessment. And even if, let's say, you are very emotional about a particular topic, you can conceal your emotions behind it. And you can try to appear more objective about it. I think your, if you try to drive your your arguments through emotions, I think that will be a little difficult for them to understand because emotions can be contested, but logics cannot be contested. So if you have factual information, if you have objective information, that you can share with them. But if you share your emotional experiences, some people will still be able to drive home a point, but it's very difficult. You require a mastery of, of emotional manipulation, which is, which is very difficult at, the, at that uh, place. So come across as a very balanced person, come across as a very logical, objective person and do not, do not drive discussion into, into, into things which could be a little emotional. So that is the other thing that I'll say. The third is in terms of how you dress up. I think a lot of people have questions on how they should dress up for the occasion. I think you should, you should be dressed up in something that is not particularly striking or noticeable. Dress as how others, as an aspirant or somebody who wants to join civil service, uh, should enter. You can keep the colors a little less striking so, so that it seems that it is, it is within uh, your personality and it is not something which, which comes outside your personality. Any accessory that you wear should, should seem that it's a part of your personality. If, for example, wearing a big buckle in your, in your belt or something I think might not help you out. So, so my, my advice is keep things simple uh, and they, I feel that uh, if you have very uh, exaggeratedly dressed, they will, they will not give you more marks. But perhaps if you go there with the unpressed shirt, I think they might, they might feel that your presentation is not that great. So I think those things are more important that you should be, your, uh, your presentation skills should be fine and overall whatever you wear should be within, within your uh, overall personality and should not come out of it. it, should not be seen as something which is very conspicuous to them who you want something. Uh, Apart from this, I would, uh, I would say that during the interview process, I think some people asked whether, whether you should have an eye-to-eye -eye contact. Uh, and some people feel that an eye-to-eye -eye contact should be maintained with every, every person who is asking questions in a panel. So I think what you can do is that, I think there is no right or wrong in this. I think what I did is that I was 
looking into the eyes of the person asking me the question. So I was not looking to everybody's eyes. So I think that is one thing which you can do. If you feel that that's a little bit of a problem, then perhaps not seeing into the eyes, I think you can look a little, little, uh, uh, I mean, above to the eyes, so so that it's not a distraction to you. So that those things, are, I think you you should practice. The fourth thing is that before you go for the interview, I think you should give a lot lot of mock interviews. Uh, and I say that because you should feel that you are at home when you are giving an interview. Only when you feel that you are absolutely comfortable with the environment, you would bring the best out of your analytical abilities to present yourself in front of them. So my, uh, my suggestion to all of you is that you should give as many mock interviews. I think an optimum number would be around 8 to 9 mock interviews. I think that will do your job. Uh, if you go farther than that, then I think you, you might not find the process interesting. So just to save time, just to prepare more, you spend around eight, I mean, you give around eight to nine mock interviews, which will uh, give you a feeling that you're prepared for the prepared for the situation. So that is another uh, important part of it. Uh, the other small bit is that uh, when you give your answers, I think you can give it a little slowly because I what I feel is that a lot of people when they're wanting to answer, I mean, answer things very fast, they sometimes miss out on the information that they are actually aware of and they are not able to bring it into the argument that they are presenting. So that is another thing I think which, which you can uh, potentially build. You can speak slowly and they would like if you speak slowly and make less mistakes. I think that, that is what they are looking for. If you, give, if you give, deliver your speech very fast or if you uh, I mean, converse in a little fast speed, they might feel that you are trying to rush out. So that is another thing I think you can, you, you can build up to. And uh, uh, there's another small bit, I think, which, which I think is for people who are wanting to score very high marks. And I think if, if that is something you can add in your speech and style is never giving categorical answers. If they ask you a question, will India progress, let's say, I'm just giving a very funny example. <laughs> but, but if you say, yes, sir, it will. So, so they are not looking for categorical responses to question. As a bureaucrat or as a diplomat or whatever uh, potential job that you will find in the service, you are expected to bring a little balance in your answers. So you can say India will grow subject to, provided, unless, until. So you are trying to make a mature statement which has categorical clauses. Like saying, I like ABC provided is there and until this is there. So basically you are building an argument. If you give a categorical answer to some question, it might come off as a little immature. So if you give an answer, join it with some compound clauses like unless, provided, subject to, if, in case, I think that lends a, a better impression to your English, English language skills. For others also in, let's say in Hindi and other languages also, I think if they come out with a little more qualitative answers rather than a categorical yes or a no. I think that would uh, help you increase your chances of doing well. So these were a few bits of uh, bits and pieces of the interview process that I wanted to share. I fully understand that interviews are very, very uncertain process and part of this examination. If you look at other parts like prelims and mains, basically you sit for prelims. Uh, prelims is a, uh, is a qualifying exam. I'm talking about the mains. So in the mains, you give, uh, let's say, uh, I mean, one paper is for around three three hours, and it's 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 for around three hundred marks. Interview just thirty minutes, and basically, if that goes well, you go very close and nearer to the service of your choice. So the emphasis of uh, of the interview as a process cannot be undermined. You should prepare, and there's a way for it. As I said, go for the DAF. Every letter that you every noun that you've written in the DAF. You should go and research for it. Once that is done, then you can also do anticipation exercise, which is what questions can be expected. That is another part, but obviously that will take more time. But what I wish all of you to do is that for every word you've written in the DAF, just go do proper six, seven pages of it. Write anything about it. Let's say I belong to the city of Amritsar. So I'll write everything. Let's say, I mean, I'll write a page on Golden Temple. I'll maybe write a page on Jallianwala Bagh. I'll, I'll write a page on uh, Vaga border just because I'm expecting a question to be asked on those inputs. And that is the best available uh, 
hint that you have or anticipate that you can uh, on in terms of what questions they will ask so my suggestion to all of you is do a proper groundwork of whatever you written in the daf be truthful in what you have reflected otherwise it can they can ask questions which can surprise you a little bit and if you are not able to give a qualitative answer there then they might feel a little let down and that impression might not be good so so with these thoughts i will just stop at this moment but i will uh, invite questions from everybody and i will uh, patiently answer all the questions that you have and i think i missed out on a lot of things that i wanted to share but i feel that that could be asked in form of questions if you feel that there's something that i didn't elaborate on comprehensively i can i can now take uh, that specific part thank you so much thank you most because some are like uh, first timers also okay so they would also like to know about because now prelims has become right. a big hurdle for many students uh, i feel it's all psychological so and how to overcome number of times new challenges when you gave and now because there is so much information overload right that the this i think generation students they have all the more new set of problems See, so few insights yes, about uh, when they look at main syllabus they get trouble then all so some insights on that right. will also be helped yeah. yeah. so pehli baat to ye hai ki mera jo maine jab prelims diya tha to mere 116 number the aur 116 hi cut off thi so i am not the best one to guide you सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट बात तो मैं ये बोलना चाहता हूँ आई थिंक आई वॉज वेरी फॉर्चुनेट कि आई स्क्रेप थ्रू द एग्जामिनेशन बट अनदर रीजन वाई आई स्कोर लेस इन दी प्रम इज बिकॉज आई हैड ओनली स्पेंड थ्री मंथ्स प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर इट बिकॉज आई ग्रेजुएटेड एंड देन आई ओनली हैड टू थ्री मंथ्स टू प्रिपेयर फॉर इट एंड देन आई रोड दी प्रम्स एंड इवन इन दैट टाइम आई वॉज प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर मेन्स बिकॉज आई आई फेल्ट दैट सी आई विल गो थ्रू द प्रम्स एग्जाम आई थॉट दैट आई एम आई एम फ्रॉम अनदर प्लानट एंड आई विल डू वेल but obviously when i wrote the prelims i i felt that i could have done a little better job so that feeling continues to stay in my mind but i will share a few things uh in terms of syllabus i think i have forgotten those things it's been 5 years for me but i can still share the grit with which i used to uh, at that time prepare for the for the prelims see prelims is basically they can ask you any question and nowadays i think they've started asking many weird questions also so for you to certainly to anticipate a particular question i think it's becoming a very difficult job and my experience is anecdotal so my experience comes from other people it's not my direct experience because in the last 4 5 years i i haven't seen the exam but they tell me that many difficult questions are being asked prelims cut off has gone further below i think it touched it touched around 95 93 so it is becoming a day by day difficult uh, job of it for all of those who who done psir i think a significant part of what is asked in prelims uh, is also taught by ma'am so in that sense uh, your chances of clearing the exam should be better because she is again taking you through the modern history she is also taking you through the uh, the constitution polity so i think those aspects uh, are important but what i feel is that there are certain topics which are more important than other topics in prelims for example modern history is very important perhaps than medieval although i think last time medieval uh, questions were also asked environment and geography during my time used to be very important so i spent a lot of time doing that uh, and whenever you do something i think in terms of effort you should see what outcome you are getting if i spend one month preparing for culture and other things then uh, the effort the outcome that i get out of my effort is far less even though you want to achieve perfection everybody is an idol want to, is idealistic they want to do as well but i think it's important to focus on areas which will invite more questions the what i other the other thing what i've seen is a lot of people uh, they are just looking for looking for various sources from where the question is being asked so they they would ask are ye question kaun se book se aaya ye quest question kahan se aaya so we should go and start reading that book the problem with this approach is that if you keep on going in that fashion i think the list of the books will not end so you should have some two books for every subject for example modern history you have two books one is a basic book and there's another little advanced book similarly for polity there's let's say lakshmikant and then there's then there's a little advanced book in uh, 
in polity. You can go for any book. I think there are a number of sources. There are there is an entire community of people that is guiding uh, others on how you should prepare for civil services. So that advice has become very easy to get these days. Uh, so that if you do, and then I think last time also when I came to man uh, coaching, I think I made a point that see revision is the most important key. And I told her that see. Let's say the first time you read modern history, you spend 30 days, let's say, reading and going through modern history. Now the task is not about reading modern history, it's about revising everything, what, what you've learned. The questions which are asked in prelims, like prelims, you don't ask the questions that you have in your mind. You have to think about it. Let's say, you have ears in your mind. In those ears, you have to eliminate the wrong options. So it's not that you go to that book, that you have to read, यहां पे कोई बुक ढूंढो कह रहा जिंद्र नगर में उससे क्वेश्चन आया गया तो मैं उससे ही पढूंगा व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट सम टाइम इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गिव आई मीन इवन फाइव क्वेश्चंस बीइंग आस्क्ड डायरेक्टली आउट ऑफ योर मेमोरी व्हाट यू हैव टू डू इज यू हैव टू थिंक ओवर देयर जैसे आपको मान लीजिए कोई मूवमेंट का ईयर पता है और उस मूवमेंट के रिगार्डिंग कोई बुक है सो यू वुड यू वुड ट्राई टू फाइंड एन ईयर व्हिच इज क्लोजर टू दैट पर्टिकुलर ईयर सो दैट थिंकिंग यू वुड यू वुड हैव टू डू ओवर देयर and to, to be able to do that thinking, I think you need to do a lot of revision. जो आपने books पहले जैसे दो दो मैंने books बोली आप उसको set कर लें और उसको बार बार उसको पढ़ें। तो जैसे the first time you read modern history, you will take thirty days. The next time you will read, you will take twenty five days. The next time you will read revise, it will be twenty days. The next time you do that, it will come to fifteen, then to twelve, then to eight, then to three. And one day before the prelims, you should be able to revise that in five hours. So that is the sort of effort you need to spend. So if you cumulatively see that effort, 30, 25, 15, 12, it will take around three months. So for every subject, what you're doing is that you have two books. You know you have to revise those books. But overall, you spend end up, you can do modern history in one month. But basically, to be able to make sure it goes into your mind, you are able to identify the years. Then you are able to build up a logic in prelims exam. And on that basis, you mark something on उसके लिए आपको उस चीज को मेमोराइज नहीं करना पड़ेगा इंटरनलाइज भी करना पड़ेगा सो so, वो उस दो तीन महीने में मैंने तो सिर्फ अभी मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री के ऊपर ही ढाई महीने बता दिए तो ये एक आइटरेटिव प्रोसेस है उसी तरह एनवायरनमेंट को भी आप पहली बार पढ़ोगे तो पंद्रह दिन लगेंगे फिर उसको तेरह पे लेके आओगे बारह पे फिर आठ पे सात पे सो ओवरऑल बिफोर योर फिल्म्स योर एवरी योर इंटायर सिलेबस मस्ट बी रिवाइज इन टू और थ्री डेज इफ यू आर एबल टू डू दिस Going through that same content, I will revise two books in two hours or three hours. If you are able to do that and if you are able to reach that level of recollection of facts and memories, then I think your chances of doing well will, in, will increase. Current affairs is very important. Current affairs they ask. In fact, in my case in 2016, I did not prepare current affairs. I thought that current affairs is not important. But they asked a lot of questions from current affairs. But I think in the subsequent examinations, they have asked less questions from current affairs. So, see, current affairs is also a similar thing. You have to revise one year's current current affairs. And I, I think a lot of people, what they do is, they start reading newspapers. The newspaper is read a day, but I think you should not do that thing. This is what I feel. What you should do is, you should pick a magazine which is already collating that information for you. And you should read it, because they already have done your work. कैटेगराइज करने का इंफॉर्मेशन उसके नोट्स भी बना दिए उसी पे पेन आप कर लेना उससे उसी नोट्स को दोबारा नोट्स में लिखेंगे उसमें फिर टाइम लगेगा और सेकंड बात है मैंने अपनी पूरी प्रिपरेशन के दौरान कोई नोट्स नहीं बनाए फॉर मी इट माय नोट्स वर जस्ट हाइलाइटर एंड आई आई यूज्ड टू मार्क ऑन द बुक्स इटसेल्फ सो आई कुड रीकलेक्ट फ्रॉम द बुक्स डायरेक्टली एंड देयरफॉर इफ यू यूज एन इंफॉर्मेशन इफ यू राइट दैट इंफॉर्मेशन पहला एक दो घंटा तो बहुत मजा आएगा लिखने में बट जैसे ही आप थर्ड आवर में जाओगे आप भूलना स्टार्ट हो जाओगे यू विल you will be focused more on writing and not revising. So my advice to all of you is that if you can cut down on note making, which a lot of people do, keep on making notes. I think you, that will increase your speed of recollection of facts and it will help uh, I mean, in your, in your overall exam thing. So these are the few things that I thought I'll share. Uh, because majority is from political science, so political science mains mein do log, do char concerns rehte hai, especially international relations, how to cover the dynamic part. And second, I keep on telling ki kitne thinker likhne hai, ya, 
thinker is from my perspective it is an addition but hmm. thinker is not the only thing that you should know right. they want to know you rather than the thinker they want to select you to wo sara jo kuch aise myths hai na if you can throw some light mujhe पॉलिटिकल साइंस से मेरा कोई वास्ता नहीं था व्हेन आई स्टार्टेड पॉलिटिकल साइंस एंड मुझे अब पाँच साल हो गए पॉलिटिकल साइंस पढ़े तो मुझे जितनी भी पॉलिटिकल साइंस आती थी वो भूल चुकी है मुझे सिर्फ इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन के बारे में ही पता है सो so, मेरी जो मेमोरी थी ना वो इट वॉज मगड अ मेमरी ऑब्वियसली आई कैन एनालाइज इन्फॉर्मेशन आई कैन थिंक अबाउट इट इफ आई रीड आई पिक अ बुक आई विल बी एबल टू रिकलेक्ट फैक्ट्स बट सी दिस इज माई एक्सपीरियंस एंड आई आई थिंक आई हैव नॉट डन टू मेनी थिंग्स विच अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल डू मैंने तो बस आई लुक डेट मैम नोट्स एंड समटाइम्स नो सो बेसिकली आई टुक दोज नोट्स एंड आई रिवाइज दैम विद दैट सेम स्पिरिट विच आई सेट यू रीड दैम फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम सो देर आर फोर पार्ट्स टू दी पोलिटिकल साइंस पेपर वन पार्ट पार्ट वन पार्ट टू एंड देन पेपर टू पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू बट एवरी पार्ट इट्स अ डिफरेंट सॉर्ट ऑफ नॉलेज दैट दे आर सीकिंग पार्ट वन Yeah, theory. So part one theory is a different uh, body of knowledge that they're looking. Part two is a different body of knowledge, and then part two is is also that way. So what you have to do, I think this is what I did, and that is the advice I'd like to share is take Mam's notes. And the way I told you, see, keep two books for everything. So so you take Mam's notes for political science, and you reread it, revise it, you go through it, let's say fifteen times. See what people do is that they go through it two three times and they saying abhi yaad nahi ho raha slip is bahut bada hai you know kafi log aise sochte hain but you have to go through it 15 times if i am saying 15 times it means 15 times first time it will take you 30 days to go through only the part one of the which is which is very difficult part one paper paper one is very difficult because if somebody comes from engineering or medical background they will feel yaar ye kaun se kaun se thinkers have you never learned about it you have to you have to revive i mean what i would say is that you have to गो थ्रू दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन उसके बाद छोटे छोटे आपको मतलब आप नोट्स बना सकते हैं एज आई सेड आई डिट आई डिट मेक कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव नोट्स बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिकलेक्ट समथिंग यू कैन मेक स्मॉल नोट्स एज टू दिस इज वट द थिंकर सेट एंड दीज आर द फाइव सिक्स आइडियाज ही प्रपोज ही और शी प्रपोज सो इफ यू डू दैट इट बिकम वेरी इजी टू सॉर्ट ऑफ कैटेगराइज दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन उसके बाद आई फील दैट इन द एग्जाम वेन आई गिव द एग्जाम आई कोटेड अ लॉर्ड ऑफ थिंकर्स आई डिट डिजिस्ट अवे फ्रॉम शोइंग माई नॉलेज so please don't desist from showing your knowledge if you know about a thinker if you know about a particular philosophy if, if, and if that is related to the question that is being asked aisa nahi koi aur cheez pati usko likh do so if you know that thing you should reflect that and i i think i extensively quoted all the thinkers on freedom you i think you can connect every thinker with freedom and then you can write something on it if you can internalize that political science knowledge Uh, which a lot of people don't see they see it as a very mechanical thing are kisi thinker hai usne ye cheeze likhi hain but agar aap usko theory samajh lete hain uske baad you can quote it in multiple ways in multiple orientations so if you quote thinkers if you quote examples uh, for example main paper 2 ki baat part 2 ki baat karunga paper 1 ke andar uske andar i had i mean unfortunately i don't know but i didn't come to the classes that i made very less time as i was saying so i had very less time and i felt are yaar polity hai to polity hum कर लेंगे कोई बात नहीं वो जो जीएस टू वाला है वही पॉलिटी चला देंगे यहीं पे भी सो दिस इज द स्पिरिट दैट आई कैरिड दैट टाइम सो आई वाज सेइंग इट्स डू अ डाई तो मुझे लगा यार इस बार पेपर क्लियर करना है सो आई शुड जस्ट फोकस ऑन सेविंग माय टाइम एंड आई शुड डू आई शुड सेव माई टाइम सो मैंने छोड़ दिया उसको पार्ट टू को मैंने कहा हाँ तो जीएस लगा बट वेन आई लुक इन टू दैट थिंग इट रियली हैज अ डिफरेंट बॉडी ऑफ नॉलेज अनफॉर्चुनेटली बाई दैट टाइम मैम लेक्चर्स वर डन सो आई went into uh, i took that book out i read it i read i had to sort of go through it 10 times 15 times before i started understanding the meaning of it and i did that i did that in a period of around 2 to 3 weeks there are so many thinkers mam quotes over there indian thinkers who have written something about indian polity etc you have to quote all of them in your answers so only then i think somebody who is in political science who is going to examine your answers will feel that you've done you've done uh, uh, i mean justification she, they, sh- they should know that you've justified the answer well agar aap wo karenge tabhi aapko marks milenge so thinker support karne padenge that's that's a reality you have to do that and you have to show that knowledge kyunki dekho kya hota hai ki jab koi banda aapka answer padta hai na to itna sara aapne freedom liberty dignity likh diya hota hai ki wo sari cheeze same hi lagne lag padti hai ek point ke baad 
to make sure that your answer stands out in comparison to others you will have to write different things and that difference will be counted कि आप कितने ऑथर्स कोट कर रहे हैं उनकी कितनी फिलोसफीज को आप वहां कोट कर रहे हैं अगर आपका रेफरेंशियल भी है वहां पे उसका रेफरेंस ऐसा नहीं आप पूरा एक्सप्लेन करेंगे आप वहां पे अगर आप थोड़ा रेफरेंस भी दे देते हैं इट विल एड दैट यू आर दैट यू रेड दैट थिंग यू अंडरस्टैंड वट इज बिंग आस्ट और अगर आप रिलेट करके लिख सकते हैं तो आपको लगेगा कि पोलिटिकल साइंस में जो कुछ भी आपने पढ़ा यू कैन रिलेट एंड को रिलेटेड एंड राइट इन राइट इन एन आंसर फॉर्म मेनी ऑफ द थ्योरीज दैट वी डू इन इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन आर कोटेबल इन द पेपर टू ऑफ पेपर टू ऑफ दार्ट टू ऑफ द पेपर टू yeah so so what i feel is political science it should not be uh, engulfed it needs to be digested it's it's a, it's something which needs to go and get absorbed into your mind and you should know you should be able to use and quote things wherever you feel it's important agar aap usko kahenge are ye thinker ne to yahan se yahan tak hi bola aur ma'am ne jo karaya usme iske bare mein nahi likha to main nahi likhunga to i think you're uh, dropping down your own chances of writing a more comprehensive answer so quote as many thinkers रिलेटेड वेल well, uh, और आप फॉर में भी लिख सकते हैं अगेंस्ट में भी लिख सकते हैं मतलब वट एवर इन्फॉर्मेशन यू हैव इट्स अबाउट हाउ यू प्रेजेंट इट तो इसीलिए आई वुड से दैट एंड द अदर थिंग इज डोंट मेक योर माइंड वेरी हैवी आफ्टर गोइंग थ्रू सो मेनी सोर्सेज आई थिंक वट मैम टीच इज यूज इनफ बट द डिफिकल्ट पार्ट ऑफ इट विच लॉट ऑफ पीपल फॉर गेट इज दे डोंट इम बाई दर नॉलेज दे जस्ट लुक एट इट लाइक अ नोट एंड देन दे स्टार्ट राइटिंग इट डाउन देर इफ यू टेक राइट इंस्पिरेशन फ्रॉम इट if you have five six authors in your mind and if you can quote them right left and center and if if you can put that in an answer form i think the examiner will like it the other thing with political science is never compromise with the vocabulary of political science jahan pe liberty aayega wahi pe liberty aayega jahan pe freedom aayega wahi pe freedom aayega freedom liberty aap bolenge same cheez hai but usme fark bahut hai because the way it is quoted what is the historical background of it so what i would say is you should understand the vocabulary of political science especially for the part 1 of the paper 1 if you do that if you find that with some historical context usko baad mein aap likhoge to fir aapko zyada number milenge kyunki aap galat cheez nahi likh rahe agar koi main ek quote kise ki uski liberty hata ke main freedom kar deta na uska sense hi change ho jata hai because socialist would see it in a different way and i think the libertarian i mean liberal thought is a little different so you should understand the vocabulary then you should be in a position to quote it wherever and that only happens if you have interest and if you have done extensive reading of whatever notes ma'am presents because she explains in a very lucid form see i had never done political science all throughout my life i joined ma'am's coaching after i had done the prelims so that too i think maybe a week after prelims and one part which i attended right from the start to the end was part a of of the paper 1 which is i would say it's not doable on your own if you i mean if you not done political science before and if you do that on your own it will take you a lot of time because she categorizes information she simplifies it she explains it in 10 different ways so that goes in your mind but i think if you look at that knowledge in a mechanical form ki nahi yaar four examples ye hai mujhe itna hi bola gaya hai note ke andar to main itna hi likh ke aaunga that way things won't work you have to organize and make the information organic so you are quoting information if you think something is correlated to a particular uh, thinker you just quote that in the thing but you should know what, where it points to and whether it is whether it is substantiating what uh, question they are on asking so ma'am with this i think <laughs> if you want you can no i'm no it's fine now this is this has been related to the preparation part and i have seen that these days uh, the experience and the attraction for uh, foreign services has grown okay. suddenly <laughs> Uh, so uh, many students number of time they do ask should they put ifs as their first mm. choice or not so two things i want to know a uh, little bit uh, overview of uh, the job so that they can better understand whether they are suitable uh, some features of that because we are very far from right. what exactly it happens then the second thing is if they are taking uh, ifs as their first choice uh for interview uh, do they require uh, some special preparation or uh, it can be like right now anything uh, so i will uh, just take the second question because it's easier to address so uh, for example i said that i mean when i prepared my daf i said i want to go for the foreign service but uh, unfortunately or for some reason they didn't test my international relations this thing so they didn't ask a single question from me so as i said interview is very subjective it's an uncertain process 
it might not go on anticipatory lines but the best you can do is still prepare for it if you said that aapka ifs first choice hai so you will want to prepare it because they can ask you questions that is what a reasonable logical uh, aspirant would want to do so i think on those lines i would suggest you to prepare for international relations a little better if you put ifs as the first choice but that does not automatically guarantee that they will ask question because they feel that that person would have prepared already in hand so they they want to make sure that the interview does not go on anticipatory lines so that is the first thing uh about ifs as a service uh, it's it's basically a very different service from uh from the domestic services that we know of which is the is and the and the ifs and and the other services that we know including the revenue services the ifs is a central uh, service it's a central civil service it's not a it's a, it is not bind, bind to a particular bound to a particular state so you work for the government of india because that subject is that subject uh, in that subject i think the the government of india is the one who who makes policies on uh it's a service which gives you tremendous opportunities to get exposed to uh, varied experiences of life that in, that includes language that includes living in different places that includes getting exposed to different a different country different environment different music and talking to interlocutors who could belong to any different part of the world uh the way in which ifs exposes you to different cultures around the globe i think uh, a common man uh, would even even if he spends all his wealth etc would not that get that sort of opportunity to really see the world in that way because what people do is they go to a particular country they stay there for two weeks and they say okay my france is done so i've seen france i have i have gone to us main 10 din us raha to mera us done ho gaya even though us is maybe maybe uh, three times bigger than india but uh, but is foreign service is something that gives you a a good duration of time to spend in a particular country so you can understand their polity their society their pop culture their music their food their cuisine and in various different ways for example when i went to china i didn't know they have a they have a different uh, uh, plug all together so i mean all the devices that i carried didn't have that sort of plug so i had to go to the market get a switch plug so that experience remains etched in my mind the the good thing about the foreign service is that it ex- exposes you to to and i think it enlarges your boundaries of what you thought about the world when you go to a particular country when you see how they live that also has a tremendous impact or influence in how you think about life so overall it's a very self absorbing service uh the other thing is that for foreign service uh, even though it a lot of people say it's it's the foreign service but it's basically an india's external service so diplomats work on all different issues for example you will have diplomats who are working on climate change there are diplomats who are working on disarmament there are diplomats who are working on uh, india china border issues something which is security dimension of it there are diplomats who are working on maritime security and they are they are working on how unclos should be implemented etc and then there are diplomats who are working on india japan relations they spent around 10 years in japan so they become india Jap- japan experts so therefore uh and also then whenever our delegation goes from india to let's say another country you will always have somebody from the foreign service as a i mean more or less to be a part of the delegation because we have in our ministry in a small service that we have i think we have nurtured some experts and they 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 take india's delegation and also apprise them of diplomatic elements how to behave in a multilateral environment etc so diplomats work on all of these issues obviously the executive writ which a lot of people like which is like jo hard facets of power which people like which is generally seen in the is uh, because you get certain powers by the state to implement things that is not there so your power that you have is advisory in nature so let's say if if there is a particular trade opening where you feel that india should sign a trade agreement with a particular country and you feel that there is a market for indian pharmaceutical goods so you would write a message to the ministry saying that you found an opportunity you feel that uh, pharmaceutical products are priced very high in this country and therefore there's a good reason why we should go for an fta with this free trade agreement with that particular country i think those are the things which foreign service does this is a trade element of it similarly polit- there are political elements of it as well 
So uh, what I would say is that foreign service focuses more on an advisory writ, an advisory sort of a power, and other services like the IPS and the IS and the revenue services also, for that example, and other services, they get their power from a written law. But for diplomacy, there is no written law. Uh, mostly when we work in outside environment, we, we do not have any power apart from the power of persuasion. And therefore, at that time, you're tagged of understanding what the other person is thinking, what is going in his mind. For example, the recent evacuation that the ministry did in Ukraine is a good example of how foreign service is getting more diversified. We are no longer just seen as a service who is uh, doing high, I mean, high table, I mean, diplomacy in some particular part of the fancy part of the world. We also put our foots on ground and we evacuate. We run a proper program where I am told because some of my colleagues were involved, we ended up evacuating 22,000 Indian students in around 90 flights. We attended around 30,000 calls and there were around 9,000 emails that we that we reply to. So that is the sort of effort which which is being done by uh, by the foreign service officers. Uh, in fact, officers from the ministry were sent to nearby countries like Romania. Then there was uh, uh, Poland, they were sent. Then Slovakia, they were sent. And then they ran this entire evacuation program. So foreign service is also becoming very, very challenging because the international environment is not that, is not that stable stable and challenges are increasing to India and I think our diplomacy is becoming more people's focused. For example, most of you would know COVID crisis. In that also the ministry ran uh, effort of, of, uh, of evacuating Indian citizens from there. And that time I was there and in fact I was a part of that evacuation program. So diplomacy is not just about being there, it's about finding spaces, finding ways in which you can benefit your country when there is no written law. And when you communicate to somebody, you send a message to them, how you communicate with them, you can create chances for your country, you can evacuate your citizens in an early time in comparison to other countries. For example, India's evacuation ended far early than even other advanced countries from Ukraine. We took that effort, we went in and we took out our citizens and we came back. And I think people don't realize this because everything went well. But uh, I think that is the kind of effort. But apart from this, there are other high-level engagement. Every country has a different kind of an engagement. If, let's say, somebody is posted to U.S., he'd be asked to uh, engage more with their Senate, their Parliament, rather than with, with the top people in the, in, uh, I mean, their secretaries, etc., because the Prime Minister directly has an engagement. So diplomats go there and they have good relations with, with the members in the Senate. Uh, with the Congress, etc. So every different country has a different opportunity. Even countries which are a little less developed will offer you opportunities of uh, finding feet for India. We have opened a lot of missions. I think the ministry has opened a lot of missions in Africa. Africa has suddenly become very important for the ministry. And there are tremendous opportunities. Uh, and, and the life overall, I would say it's... Every country is different. But I think wherever the capital is situated, you get a decent uh, living condition. And the capitals around most of the countries are more or less similarly developed than uh, Delhi. Uh, uh, and uh, therefore, those problems will not come. Obviously, you work in a different country and I think that can bring some sort of pressure for your families. And you might see, I can't take my families. But you can also take your families. That's not a problem. You can take your families. But it's just that there's something that goes in your mind that the geographical barrier is something you feel that it's it's something that creates a stress in your mind but even when you work for the IS and the IPS and the and the forest service customs etc uh, what i've seen is that uh, people work outside their uh, home places they belong to and during my times it used to be that uh, 60 33% of people i think close to that they used to be in their home cars otherwise everybody of them used to be outside so, and when you work in a different cadre, that feeling is different, also different working in a home cadre. It's you, you're situated outside, your families also can't move with you. So that's another aspect of it. And for example, I used to stay in Beijing, so that Beijing journey used to be five hours. And if you take a flight from, let's say, if I want to take a flight from Delhi to Mumbai, it will be maybe one, one and a half, two hours, etc. So in, th in that comparison way, I think you would find that even 5R doesn't seem that big uh, as a thing, but uh, definitely I think, as I said, uh, the other other uh, services like the IS and the IPS certainly do have uh, a writ which a lot of people 
that is the reason a lot of people want to enter join enter and join the service because you want to directly enable helping i mean directly help people out and you want to see a manifestation in front of your eyes somebody comes to you wanting something to be done with their ration card you bring your office and you do that and you see okay fine your authority works and you're able to do that but diplomacy works in very discrete ways for example there was an entire body of experts who worked on making sure india's vaccines get recognized outside nobody knows about it but i think there was an effort which was done we went to these countries we told them that see we have produced a vaccine we need your certification we want indians to go out we want you to come and we will we will certify your vaccines but you also need to certify our vaccine so there was a huge effort which was put into this but i'll stop with this and not take the argument further thank you so much i think anmol has answered lot of questions but it's still if you want to ask some questions uh, from anmol we'll pick up some 5 10 questions anmol would you like to have some coffee or something no i'm that i'm okay. just i'm okay. just taking so yeah so how did you tell to sell down give you first step that was so yes, much take my can if so, you want we can sit yeah give my like सर हाउ डिड यू डेल्ट विद सेल्फ डाउट ड्यूरिंग योर फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट ऑन दैट विद सो मच सो लेस प्रिपरेशन ऑफ मेन्स एंड ऑप्शन i think you should not think beyond a certain point overthinking breeds doubt if you overthink and if you're not reflecting that in terms of your action then you would start doubting yourself so when you get an idea ki yaar aise prepare karna chahiye usko overthink mat karo usko karo jab bhi lag raha hai ki yaar i have few doubts in my mind there's a self doubt you can only remove your self doubt by creating small milestones small objectives ki yaar aaj is hafte maine ye plan kiya ki i will complete some part of the modern history and if you are not completing that on time then you are creating self doubt for yourself complete your tasks which you have set agar maine ye bola hai ki main part 1 paper 1 ka main 25 din mein khatam karunga and this is a target that i have set for myself you have to complete it if you complete it then the self doubt will go away self doubt will keep on coming a good aspirant will always have self doubt to kahi log itne arrogant hote hain unko lagta hai prepare karne ki zarurat nahi but what i feel is that doubt can only go away if you build slowly if you build day by day it's a habit that you have to create to or at least we should give 2 hours every day dekhi ye aapki taiyari pe depend karta hai jaise maine aapko bola ki mujhe apne pe bahut pride thi ki i will clear the prelims but mera hal mujhe hi pata hai kaise aaye cleared prelims so it's a very uncertain question iska koi answer nahi hai kyunki aapki taiyari ke bare aapko zyada pata hai if you think that you are sitting handsomely and you will clear prelims you can also do optionals agar aapki classes chal rahi hain classes complete kar lo agar aapko lagta hai aur time aap optional ko dena chahte hain wo bhi kar sakte hain isme koi sahi aur galat ki baat nahi hai isme what do you really feel if you give a mock test and if you're not able to get 60 questions correct then maybe you should think i mean twice about spending more time somewhere else a metric which i think works is that if in in a if in a mock test you're getting 60 questions correct 60 65 questions correct i am not taking the wrong ones if you are getting 60 65 question correct you are just there and you need to continue to build that momentum so with that i think sir uh, sir what was your strategy for answer writing yeah see <laughs> actually na hamare civil services mein jo bhi community hai usme bahut sare log guidance dete hain so so they have made a answer writing rocket science basically it is not a rocket science it's a very simple logical thing 
वो चाहते हैं कि अगर आप आंसर लिखें तो पहले आप स्टार्ट करने के लिए कोई इंट्रोडक्शन दें उसके बाद आप आंसर बुलेटेड फॉर्म में वन टू थ्री फोर करके आप उसको आंसर दें और एंड में आप कंक्लूजन लिख दें थोड़ा सा और डीप जाते हुए अगर मान लो उस क्वेश्चन के तीन पार्ट्स हैं सो यू गो टू द फर्स्ट पार्ट मार्केट एज ए एंड देन यू राइट वन टू थ्री यू आंसर दिस देन यू गो टू द बी पार्ट ऑफ इट सो दैट द एग्जामिनर नोज यू लुक डैट ऑल द थ्री पार्ट ऑफ इट ए बी एंड सी एंड देन यू आंसर इट दिस इज वॉट आंसर राइटिंग इज फॉर्चुनेटली और अनफॉर्चुनेटली दैट टाइम वेन आई वॉज राइटिंग माई पी एस आई आर ऑप्शनल आई डेंट राइट अ सिंगल मॉक टेस्ट सो आई जस्ट क्रैश इन द एग्जाम एंड बेसिकली आई न्यू हाउ द आंसर नीड्स टू बी फॉर्मुलेटेड आई डोंट से दिस इज अ मॉडल फॉर एवरीबडी आई डिड दैट बिकॉज आई हैड लेस टाइम बट आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यू वुड हैव सम टाइम यू शुड राइट आंसर्स यू शुड गेट इट चेकड एंड बेसिकली आई एज आई सेड There is nothing to be done in the in the answer writing. Answer writing एक ऐसी चीज़ अगर कोई बोल देना कि it's something that you need to master. फिर तो आप आंसर से लिखते रहेंगे You will not focus on the substantive part of it. आपने जैसे education as a field है तो education के ऊपर कोई भी question आएगा उसको उसके अंदर आपके पास को अगर आपके पास कोई thoughts हैं you just present them there it, itself. Don't think that I need to do an answer writing of an education based कोई question कि बाद में मैं paper में लिखूँ and I'll score better. The other thing is, if you go with the structure, when you write the mains answer, I think your intention should be to do average and above average in every question. So, in some questions you would do average, in some questions you do above average. What happens is overall you will get somewhere around one hundred five, one hundred and six. If you say, "Arey, I will write a good answer," but in that spirit of writing a good answer, you end up end up wasting so much time that you are not able to do justice to other questions. Then I think it's a bad thing. So, attempt all the questions. right uh, as i said logical answers but uh, obviously don't think that answer writing is a rocket science and you need to do a lot of answer writing it's basically simple thing you know an answer you have to write that on the sheet with the proper introduction proper conclusion and 1 2 3 4 as bullet points sir sir uh, the way uh, of writing answers of ir of gs how it is different from optional i think there is a little bit of difference at least i created that difference because Uh, there were few things ma'am explained during that time uh, the first thing is don't use a lot of bullet points because uh, in 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 the optionals the information is in, information is a little deep so if you do that by bullet point 1 2 3 4 you might not be able to convey a clear idea so uh, write answers in paragraph then in the i think ma'am would be able to elaborate even better than me but the thing is that as i said vocabulary is very important in a in a political science exam so you have to do justice to sir uh, is there any difference in content content obviously because what you get in what you get in mams uh, in terms of the content she she teaches is very different from what you see in gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 to jo content padhaya jata hai wahi likhna padega aur usi vocabulary mein likhna padega aur agar aap soch rahe hain ki gs2 ka answer mein पार्ट टू में लिख दूंगी पेपर वन में और मुझे उतने नंबर मिल जाएंगे वो थोड़ी सी मतलब इट डजेंट वर्क सो यू हैव टू डू प्रॉपर जस्टिफिकेशन उसमें आपको ऑथर्स लिखने पड़ेंगे दी अदर थिंग इज लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल वट दे डूज दे यूज पी एस आई आर थिंग्स एंड दे राइट इन द जी एस टू दैट इज ओके बट आई थिंक जी एस टू आंसर्स कुड बी मेड अ लिटल जर्नलिस्टिक यू शूड नॉट ट्राई एंड शो योर नॉलेज ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर थिंग विच दे आर नॉट इवन आस्किंग समटाइम्स इन योर in your eagerness to show your knowledge you end up writing things which are not directly related to so, aap gs ke answers ko saral bana ke likhein jaise wo kiya jata hai aur jo ps ir usko bhi saral hi banana hai but jo words mam sikhate hain jo jo bhi vocabulary ke words hain uh, jo thesaurus hai uski usko maintain karte hue hi aapne answer likhne hai so that if an examiner is checking he should feel that you you learned political science it's not something which which you just writing some general words and then you have to substantiate with a lot of examples as many examples you can collate and collect on a particular thing i think they are better and the only notes that i made in the entire examination process is ma'am's note i used to come to the class make notes go back and those notes i revisited around 15 20 times so that is the effort you need to do the revision as i say is, is the is the key behind uh, doing well in the exam hello uh continue one not yeah uh, sir uh, i think this was your first attempt i think so uh, 
yes, yes. stereotype is created like uh, ek attempt ne nikla to next niklega next nahi to third i want to hear that how to make your first attempt as your last attempt how should be our approach to just clear in the first attempt itself <laughs> <laughs> philosophical to tum anmol coffee piyo main batati hu thoda bahut theek hai तो जैसे ये एक बहुत जनरल क्वेश्चन होता है पॉलिटिकल साइंस के आंसर और जीएस के आंसर तो तुम लोग सिर्फ एक साइड ऑफ द क्वन देखते हो और ऐसी चीज के बारे में ज्यादा सोच रहे हो जिसका रिलेवेंस नहीं क्योंकि आंसर uh, क्वेश्चन का होता है ठीक है नेचर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस अपने आप ही डिफरेंट होते हैं यहां पर जो क्वेश्चन होंगे वो चूंकि एक सब्जेक्ट है तो एनालिटिकल और एक स्पेसिफिक ट्रेंड देखोगे जीएस के आंसर उस तरीके के होंगे नहीं दे विल बी मोर करेंट ओरिएंटेड तुम्हारे पास वर्ल्ड लिमिट भी है तो पहले ये देखना है कि जो क्वेश्चन पूछा जा रहा है उसको मैं एड्रेस करूं बजाय कि वो किस सब्जेक्ट का क्योंकि नॉलेज ऐसे कंपार्टमेंटलाइज नहीं करी जा सकती नेक्स्ट है कि ऑप्शनल है तो आपको दिखाना पड़ेगा क्योंकि उस ऑप्शनल में उतना वर्क है उसकी नॉलेज है आपको तो वो ऑटोमेटिकली होता है उसके लिए कोई एफर्ट नहीं लगाना पड़ता है जब वो पॉलिटिकल साइंस में क्वेश्चन भी वैसे होंगे और तो वो पूरी नॉलेज अपने आप आएगी वर्ड लिमिट है टू द पॉइंट लिखना है नेक्स्ट है आपको अपनी जैसे बताया कि आप कि जो नॉलेज है उसको आप यूज करें डिस्प्ले करें लेकिन शो ऑफ नहीं करें ठीक है जो भी होना चाहिए बहुत नेचुरली चीजें आनी चाहिए फ्लो में आनी चाहिए फ्लो में लिखते लिखते अगर आपके पास एग्जाम्पल्स आ रहे हैं कुछ आर्टिफिशियल करने की जरूरत नहीं है नेक्स्ट है हर इंसान की अपनी स्ट्रेटेजी होती है किसी की लैंग्वेज स्ट्रेंथ है किसी की एक्सप्रेशन स्ट्रेंथ है तो अपनी स्ट्रेंथ को डिस्प्ले करना और अपनी वीकनेस को थोड़ा मिनिमाइज करना कि उतना नोटिस ना किया जाए ये सारी चीजें थोड़ा कुछ स्किल्स आर आल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट और थिंकिंग थिंकिंग की भाई ये क्वेश्चन है वो प्रोसेस के और मेरे हिसाब से अगर आपके पास जीएस में आई डोंट थिंक बहुत राइटिंग स्किल मैटर करता है जीएस में नॉलेज का जो कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव बेस है वो ज्यादा मैटर करेगा क्योंकि सिलेबस बहुत ज्यादा है टॉपिक्स बहुत ज्यादा होते हैं करंट बहुत ज्यादा कवर किया जाता है तो जीएस में इंफॉर्मेशन का रोल ज्यादा है थिंकिंग का रोल सभी जगह है लेकिन जीएस में पॉलिटिकल साइंस या ऑप्शनल है तो वो कंपेरेटिवली स्टैटिक मिलेगा जीएस में अदर चैलेंजेस है हर पेपर के अपने चैलेंजेस हैं आप के पास अगर बहुत अच्छा समय है तो आप हर पेपर को उसकी क्या रिक्वायरमेंट है जैसे आप इकोनॉमी ही पेपर थ्री में पढ़ रहे हो तो उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट है कि माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स की रिक्वायरमेंट है उसको समझना पड़ेगा अगर आप रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं समझे और डार्क में चलते चले गए तो हर एरिया को चाहे वो जीएस है गिव प्रॉपर रेस्पेक्ट उसको उतना ही प्रोफेशनलिज्म से डील करो वो आइडियल सिचुएशन है लेकिन हाँ आपने बहुत कम टाइम में है तब आप नेटवर्किंग ऑफ आइडियाज करो क्योंकि किसी भी तरीके से हमको मार्क्स लाने हैं तो एक आइडियल आपके पास कितना टाइम अवेलेबल है इस पर भी डिपेंड करता है नेक्स्ट है जैसे इन्होंने बोला वन अटैम्प्ट टू अटैम्प्ट थर्ड तो ऑब्वियसली वी शुड ऑलवेज टारगेट फर्स्ट अटैम्प्ट क्योंकि आपकी नॉलेज फ्रेश रहती है इंफॉर्मेशन मोटिवेशन हाई रहता है और चीजें आसानी से होती हैं अगले अटेम्प्ट में प्रिपरेशन कुछ सुधर जाती है ऐसा नहीं होता है डिपेंड आपको वो देखना पड़ेगा कि क्यों अगला अटेम्प्ट और क्या अगले अटेम्प्ट में कुछ कमाल होने वाला है ऐसा नहीं वो बड़ा लेवल प्लेइंग फील्ड हो जाता है यूपीएससी में क्योंकि एग्जाम इस नॉलेज से भी ज्यादा स्किल बेस्ड एग्जाम है अगर वो स्किल्स आपने बदले नहीं अगले अटेम्प में कुछ और भी पढ़ लिया लेकिन समझा नहीं कि पढ़ना क्या था और कैसे पढ़ना है तो फिर आप वहीं पहुंच जाते हैं तो पहली चीज है कि जब लोग फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट में कर ही रहे हैं तो हम सेकेंड अटेम्प्ट क्यों सोचें बट अगेन थिंक ये है कि आपका अपने ऊपर कंट्रोल है किसी दूसरे की परफॉर्मेंस पे नहीं कंट्रोल है 
इफ समबडी इज बेटर देन आपसे हो ही गया तो ऑब्वियसली यू हैव टू बी वेरी प्रैक्टिकल कि हो सकता है मतलब अगर सेकेंड में देना पड़ा तो डोंट लूज योर कि भाई मैं आ, कुछ मेरे अंदर कमी है और बाकी लोग दिस इज नॉट द केस इवन इसमें अगर कोई सिलेक्ट नहीं भी और हुआ भी इट विल नॉट मेक एनी डिफरेंस ये तो एक है सारे ही लोग थोड़ी सिलेक्ट हो पाएंगे देर इज अ लिमिटेशन मेन है कि हमारा एटीट्यूड क्या है जॉब को लेके लाइफ को लेकर के हम सीख रहे हैं नहीं सीख रहे हैं और हैव दैट एटीट्यूड या जो एक पॉजिटिव माइंडसेट है इंजॉय करो प्रोसेस को उस चीज को इंजॉय करो यस yes, कोई स्कोप नहीं है फॉर फुलिशनेस कि आप फुलिश मिस्टेक्स नहीं करें आपको कौन से क्वेश्चन ट्रबल करते हैं ये जानना कि इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी में क्या चेंजेस आए हैं या ये जानना कि हम कितने थिंकर लिखेंगे पॉलिटिकल साइंस लिखेंगे या ये लिखेंगे तो आप क्या चीज के फोकस हैं कितना आपका ओरिएंटेशन है ये सारी चीजें मैटर करेंगी प्लस प्रिपरेशन के स्टेजेस होते हैं अगर आप इनिशियल स्टेज में तो दूसरी चीजों पर ध्यान दो फंडामेंटल्स को स्ट्रॉन्ग करना करेंट एंड फंडामेंटल्स में अगर आप फंडामेंटल्स को पकड़ के रखोगे जैसे अनमोल कह रहे कि बहुत करेंट पे नहीं ध्यान दिया तो फंडामेंटल्स के बेसिस पे आप करेंट डील कर पाओगे लेकिन करेंट के बेसिस पे फंडामेंटल्स डील नहीं होते तो अगर आपको टाइम कम है अब हर की स्ट्रेटजी टाइम के हिसाब से होगी टाइम कम है तो फंडामेंटल्स को स्टिक करो टाइम प्रॉपर है तो दोनों के साथ और कभी ऐसा नहीं होता कि यू विल गेट बेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सब कुछ सब कुछ सही नहीं हो पाता ठीक है और वो किसी के भी साथ नहीं होता तो उसी में कंपेरेटिव परफॉर्मेंस रहता है तो ट्राई टू बी अलर्ट ट्राई टू बी स्मार्ट इंटरेस्टेड अब जैसे अनमोल कह रहे तो मैं पॉलिटिकल साइंस में तुम लोग तो अंडरलाइन कर लो इसको अंडरलाइन वही की है थियरी से एक लैंग्वेज डेवलप हो जाती है उसी लैंग्वेज का यूटिलाइजेशन फिर इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस में होगा इन्हीं स्कॉलर्स को आप इन्हीं के रेफरेंस से बहुत सारी चीजें समझा सकते हैं अब अकलमंदी क्या है कि हमने कम पढ़ा और ज्यादा उसका यूटिलाइजेशन करना सीख लिया क्योंकि नॉलेज की भी कोई लिमिट नहीं है आप कभी भी परफेक्टली नहीं पूरा पढ़ पाएंगे एग्जाम की कभी परफेक्ट सिचुएशन नहीं होगी किसी के साथ और परफेक्ट सिचुएशन भी बड़ा सब्जेक्टिव है आपको हमेशा अपनी सिचुएशन खराब ही लगती है ठीक है तो यही साइकोलॉजिकल बैरियर्स को आप ओवरकम करेंगे कि मुझे ये चीजें दीज आर नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन इंपॉर्टेंट क्या है ये सेग्रीगेट कर पाना ये इंपॉर्टेंट है ये अनइम्पॉर्टेंट है इसको जानना इसको इग्नोर करना इग्नोर करना भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि किन चीजों को इग्नोर करा जाए किन चीजों को लिया जाए अगर आप एक साइंटिफिक ढंग से पढ़ते हैं मुझे नहीं लगता कोई रीजन है क्योंकि मेजॉरिटी नहीं पढ़ती मेजॉरिटी को पता ही नहीं रहता करते क्या है पढ़ के आते लेकिन तुरंत भी नहीं बता पाते कि क्या किया है आज ही पूछ ले आज क्या सुबह पढ़ा है तो नहीं बता पाते लोग री, वो नहीं अगर आप रिकलेक्ट कर पा रहे और यू आर बेस्ट जज सबको पता होता है कि वो क्या कर रहा है या क्या करना चाहता है और वो पता होना इस एग्जाम के लिए तो जरूरी है तो अपनी स्ट्रेटजी उस हिसाब से बनानी है चांस फैक्टर है यू ट्राई योर बेस्ट फर्स्ट में होता है सेकेंड में होता है थर्ड में होता है बिकॉज चांस चांस हैज अ रोल तो चांस फैक्टर है या हेलो सर जस्ट बेसिकली व्हेन मैम वाज फोकसिंग ऑन फंडामेंटल्स तो फंडामेंटल्स के अंदर मुझे इतना टाइम नहीं स्पेंड करना पड़ा क्योंकि I always thought that I liked social science. In my college, I took around eight electives in social sciences, from public administration, conflict management, to, uh, to uh, I mean, pub, I mean, various different subjects I took. So I always took pride in my skills of understanding humanities based subject. So मुझे fundamentals में इतना ज़्यादा time spend करने की ज़रूरत नहीं पड़ी. So I directly went into what the task is. For some of you who don't have that kind of aptitude or interest you will need to build that level of uh, base and that is where fundamentals are very important for me in that case i didn't need to spend that time so uh, and the other thing is 
there are like i did all my schooling in a english medium school and then it was easy for me to write my thoughts in, in the answer sheet but i think for some of you might not have that sort of a stable or a similar background for you for some i think it might be a challenge to first be in a position to to whatever you think to be able to write that in the uh, means i think for some that is a challenge for, for so for those people i think language also needs to develop see political science which ma'am teaches is at the end of the day uh, th there are certain words and they are used in a certain connotation if you're not comfortable with the language initially you will not be able to reproduce that same effect in the means so that is another thing with some people can work i, I thought of adding this because people have different challenges i had a different challenge i had a time based challenge i my fundamentals were not weak my only problem was that i was looking to to make sure that i get a better outcome in less time so that is why i prepared 3 months for prelims i didn't have more time i couldn't uh, uh, spend so much time writing tests because i had less time so based on that i did this but i knew that i had grown in a very haphazard way and some of you probably would not be able to afford going in in that haphazard way so for you i think some of you would need to build that a little more logically a little more balanced way jaise maine kiya aur main uske baad jab maine khatam ho gaya jaise when i did mains i reattended ma'am's classes so i told ma'am i want to reattend your political science classes because i did not finish it and she she was very generous she said please come so i started attending and then the interview call came and then i again left psir and i would have approached her thrice if if my, and i i think she would have been generous to allow me again inside <laughs> but uh, but what i mean to say is i went in a very very haphazard way and that you can only do if you are very confident with with the knowledge that you are digesting agar aap har koi banda usko karega to thoda different matlab unke liye different challenge hoga so you have to find which area you feel that there is a challenge you have to build those weakness i mean build on and minimize those weaknesses and i didn't have to do that and that is why my time is a little less how i how, how i went through the exam thank you hello sir how did you manage your revision in so, a short span of time and how did you manage your btech with preparation of civil services btech so uh, i am being very honest i did not do any preparation during my college time so i say that with all the honesty that i have i in fact uh, had done quite well in my engineering at some point i had Uh, ambitions of going outside the country and and perhaps doing a ms in computer science or computer science mein to naukri wagaira bhi achhi lag jati hai to us tarah se uh, i did not spend that much time in fact my gpa was also very high some somewhere around 9.2 in the college so i was focused too much on that particular aspect so for me my degree and academic scores were very important it was only in the last 6 months when i thought oh now is the time i have to decide so then i started a thesis nearby uh, this pusa road and at that time i was also preparing and i was also doing attending that program so i if you ask me how much time i spent you can say it's 5 months somewhere around in the month of feb or march i would have uh, sort of started and uh, my first thing was get done with prelims get the experience of mains i was not thinking too far obviously when i reached closer near to the month of june i started getting very confident about myself and i started preparing for mains only to realize that i scored 116 marks out of 116 in the prelims <laughs> which is a problem as i said sir sir mera question prelims se related hai सर कई बार ऐसा होता है हमने सीनियर से अपने सुना है कि प्रीलिम्स में ऐसे क्वेश्चंस आते हैं जिनके बारे में पता नहीं होता वो कहां से हैं उन अनप्रेडिक्टेबल होते एक तरफ है तो सर हमारी उनके लिए क्या अप्रोच होनी चाहिए हम कैसे उन क्वेश्चंस को अटेम्प्ट कर सकते हैं ठीक है जो देखो अनप्रेडिक्टेबिलिटी रहेगी क्योंकि एग्जाम का नेचर ही है एलिमिनेशन ट्रेंड है ना सिलेक्शन से ज्यादा और अनप्रेडिक्टेबल अगर देखोगे तुमको पढ़ा वाला क्वेश्चन थर्टी फोर्टी क्वेश्चन से ज्यादा ऐसा नहीं होगा जिसको लगे कि हाँ मैंने पूरा पढ़ा है तो उसको आप फंडामेंटल से लॉजिक से प्रैक्टिस से एलिमिनेशन स्किल से वो वहीं पर आपको उसके लिए एक इंटेलिजेंट गेस करना पड़ेगा जो आपने नॉलेज बिल्ड की है उसके बेसिस पर राइट right लॉजिक्स के थ्रू सिलेक्शन एलिमिनेशन करके वो करा जाता है और अनप्रेडिक्टेबल चीजों के बारे में ज्यादा नहीं सोचना है प्रेडिक्टेबल एरियाज पर 
प्रिपरेशन ज्यादा करनी होती है ऐसे एरियाज जो स्टैटिक हैं जैसे पॉलिटी है तो पॉलिटी आपने एक स्पेसिफिक बुक से भी करोगे तो 12 15 क्वेश्चन में से 10 से 12 मिल जाएंगे क्वेश्चंस तो और जिस पे हमारा कमांड है उसको ही अपनी स्ट्रेंथ को और स्ट्रांग करना चाहिए कुछ एरियाज का लिमिटलेस है मान लीजिए साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी है लिमिटलेस है बहुत उस तरीके से आ सकता है वो क्योंकि अगर तुम नहीं कर पाओगे तो मेजॉरिटी चांसेस हैं लोग बहुत रेयर होगा कि वो अनप्रडिक्टेबल क्वेश्चंस किसी को पता हो और उसने वहां से पढ़ा हो तो डोंट थिंक अबाउट दैट जो बेसिक कंटेक्स्ट बेसिक आपकी बुक्स हैं बेसिक टेक्स्ट बुक हैं एनसीईआरटी बुक्स हैं उनको पढ़ो समझ के रिलेशंस टेक्निक्स स्किल्स कुछ एलिमिनेशन जब आप टेस्ट सीरीज की प्रैक्टिस करते हो तो गलत क्यों हो रहा है क्यों नहीं हो रहा है हर चीज पढ़ी नहीं जा सकती लेकिन हर चीज की ट्रेनिंग भी कभी गवर्नमेंट नहीं दे सकती है आपको बहुत सारी अनप्रडिक्टेबल सिचुएशन फिर रियल लाइफ में आएंगी तो उनको आपके जो स्किल्स हैं उनके थ्रू ही आप डील करते हो ना ठीक है यस गुड आफ्टरनून मैम गुड आफ्टरनून सर सर मेरा ये क्वेश्चन है कि जैसे आपने कहा कि सर इंटरव्यू इज ऑल अबाउट पर्सनैलिटी तो सर वो मेरे अंदर सर मैं कैसे समझू की सर कौन सा सर्विस मेरे लिए सही है Uh, आजकल सर बहुत सारे सर ऐसे सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म में सर हम देखते हैं कि बहुत सारे ऐसे ऑलरेडी सिलेक्टेड हो चुके हैं किसी ना किसी सर्विस में किसी को आईआरएस मिला है किसी को आईपीएस मिला है सर कोई और सर्विस में उसके बाद भी सर वो अटैम्प देते हैं ताकि सर उनको बेस्ट एंड बेस्ट सब सर्विस मिल सके सर टू थाउजेंड के सर जो फर्स्ट अटैम्प जो जो फर्स्ट रैंकर है शुभम कुमार ऑलरेडी सर वो इंडियन डिफेंस मिनिस्ट्री सर्विस में सिलेक्टेड है उसके बाद भी सर वो आई के लिए उन्होंने दिया तो सर ये कैसे समझे कि सर मेरे लिए कौन सा सर्विस बेटर होगा सर काइंडली एलोबरेट थैंक यू सी देर आर सम रियलिटीज ऑफ सिविल सर्विसेज वंस यू गेट इनटू इट व्हाट आई फील इज दैट इन द आईएएस इन द आईएफएस हम जो रोल्स करते हैं उसका जो सबसे सीनियर मोस्ट रोल है जैसे मेरी सर्विस के जो सबसे सीनियर मोस्ट रोल है वो फॉरन सर्विस का ही ऑफिसर है ना तो आई के अंदर भी अगर आप देखें वो बहुत सारे डिपार्टमेंट्स और मिनिस्ट्रीज में मैनेज करते हैं इफ़ यू लुक एट इंडियन रेवेन्यू सर्विसेज यू वुड फाइंड दैट एट द टॉप हैराकी यू वुड फाइंड ऑफिसर्स फ्रॉम आई एस और फ्रॉम अदर डिपार्टमेंट्स एज वेल सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर ओन रिसोर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर ओन प्रमोशंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर अगर आप करियर में एडवांसमेंट को देखना चाहते हैं तो कई लोग ये सोचते हैं कि उन्हें आई करना चाहिए क्योंकि आई में आने के बावजूद भी वो रेवेन्यूज जैसे डोमेन में काम कर सकते हैं सो so, इसीलिए काफ़ी लोग आई के बाद भी एग्जाम लिखते हैं आई आई डू आई आई वॉन्ट टू स्टेयर आई आर एस इज़ अ फेंटेस्टिक सर्विस इट गिवज यू ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू वर्क पर्टिकुलरली रिलेटेड ट्रैक्सेशन फाइनेंस एट्रा बट सम पीपल वॉन्ट टू राइट बिकॉज अनफॉर्चुनेटली अफॉर्चुनेटली Uh, IS has a little be- better career advancement vis-a-vis some some of the other services. Uh, IFS on that same ground is is a little isolated. So we only have officers from the foreign service, and they are right from the bottom to the top. And we if even if we have somebody from outside, they they are only two three of or maybe four five of them who are in some select roles. So if, even if you look at IPS, uh, the home department is I mean. it gets i mean so there are services like is who continue to have some sort of dominance in that area for the home secretary of 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 india comes from the is so what i mean to say is that people write uh, exam to better their uh, chances of career advancement progress etc and that is why they they want to go with roles which give them more diversity and that is why they write the exam again i hope sir. that clearly clarifies sir as you are here to share your experience so just share the experience of the examination hall while you are writing the mains answer see that's a very good question you asked i mujhe bahut acha laga kyunki kafi log is cheez ko darte hain ki yaar exam mein jayenge aur kya sochenge wahan ja ke so see maine sabse pehle kya kiya tha this this was how my mind was working that time maine jab tak apna mains se pehle jitne bhi mock likhe the i had never completed anything in 3 Hours before than three hours, twenty minutes. So I had always taken twenty minutes more. So I think I knew that for me the first challenge is to complete the test. So first of all, I made a key. I bought a watch. It is that which is in the digital watch, not the analog watch. In which time 
शूट करता है थ्री फोर्टी वन थ्री फोर्टी टू थ्री फोर्टी थ्री से करके उसमें सेकेंड्स भी होते हैं सो आई हैड पुट दैट फिक्सड इन टू माई माइंड दैट आई विल ओनली स्पेंड सेवन टू एट मिनट्स ऑन एवरी क्वेश्चन द पॉइंट वेयर आई ओवर स्टेप दैट थिंग आई विल हैव टू चैलेंज समर एल्स सो मेरा सबसे पहले था क्वेश्चन को कंप्लीट करना सेकेंड आई वॉज नॉट लुकिंग एट द क्वेश्चन पेपर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड कि यार कौन सा क्वेश्चन मुझे आता है कौन सा क्वेश्चन नहीं आता वैन आई वेंट टू द पेपर आई न्यू आई आई मीन आई थॉट दैट ऑल क्वेश्चन आर इक्वी डिस्टेंट फ्रॉम मी तो कोई सारे क्वेश्चन मुझे आते भी हैं सारे क्वेश्चन मुझे नहीं भी आते अगर मुझे टाइम ज़्यादा मिल जाएगा तो मैं उसके ऊपर किताब भी लिख दूंगा और अगर मुझे टाइम नहीं मिलेगा तो फिर मैं मतलब एक पे एक शीट में भी उसको कंप्लीट करने की कोशिश करूँगा सो सी द चैलेंज इज टू कम्प्लीट द पेपर If you think that you can produce a fantastic answer which the examiner will appreciate and give, will give you more marks, that is not possible. Your intention should be कि यार मैंने average या average से ज़्यादा marks हर question में लाने हैं to better your chances. You trying to hit that red spot. The closer you get, it is better. But don't try to waste time by producing a perfect answer on a particular question. So इसीलिए मैंने पहले question से start किया. जैसे नौ बजे पेपर स्टार्ट हो गए नौ बज के आठ मिनट पे मैं दूसरे क्वेश्चन पे था नो no मैटर कितना मुझे पसंद था क्वेश्चन कितना मुझे नहीं पसंद था तो मैं आई टू स्टॉप द सेकंड थिंग आई हैड टोल्ड माय माइंड वाज दैट आई विल यूज एवरी इंच ऑफ स्पेस दैट इज देयर इन द आंसर शीट आई डोंट नो हाउ इट विल गो विद एवरीबडी ऑफ यू देर आज आंसर आई मीन देर आर लिमिटेशन एक्सेट्रा बट आई बेसिकली हैड अ लिटल बिगर हैंड राइटिंग एंड आई वर्चुअली रोट ऑन एवरी every paper i mean every answer paper that was given to me so i completed it so for me i think i when i sat for the mains i was not wanting to produce a brilliant answer i was wanting to make sure that i go to the next phase and i could have guaranteed that if i have done all the questions agar main sabhi question karunga usi ke baad hi mera chance hoga na kuch na kuch maan lijiye ek question mein main 8 number le aata hu 12.5 mein se agla question main attempt hi nahi kar raha so it is of no use so it's better that you go for 5 and 6 it's still 11 so go for some sort of that uh, thing uske baad ek ek hota hai ki there are there is some information that you've written which is important in an answer jaise koi examples likhi hain and you want the examiner to look at it to maine paper mera starting ke paper to chalo mere 250 i mean 2 hours 55 minutes mein khatam ho rahe the i became little better by gs4 so i used to complete my paper in around 2 or 45 minutes 15 minutes earlier and what i used to do was that i i i would write with a blue pen all the all the answers and then take a black pen in the end when i had 10 minutes or 5 minutes i would mark important things wherever i could see that there's something a proper noun in my sentence i will just mark it so that the examiner knows that see i am emphasizing on a particular knowledge an objective knowledge and they should see before giving me a mark on something so that is one thing second thing that i did is that i whenever i looked at the answer agar mere bullet points mein koi problem thi jaise agar maine dots lagaye hue hain usko main 1 2 3 4 mein kar deta tha wo isliye karta tha kyunki mujhe lagta tha ki har jo answer main likh raha hu my examiner should get to know i have attended part a i have written 1 2 3 4 4 4 points bullet points to it and i should be awarded right marks for it sometimes what people do is they just put dots and the examiner also loses the the ki aapne kitne points likhe so start writing 1 2 3 4 then go to the next bullet point b b basically which means the second part of the question then start again 1 2 3 4 at least he is knowing that you attended all the parts of the question if you do these basics correct i don't think information wise or knowledge wise you will find challenges but obviously this exam is also uh, is not about competition they have if if 10 lakh people apply for it they wanting to select 1000 so despite doing that you might face issues but what i mean to say is this is the best you can do to guarantee your chances i hope i made myself uh, sort of clear thank you good afternoon sir good afternoon sir good good afternoon ma'am sir Good afternoon, sir. Sir, all your selling experience is very good and fine. Sir, my question is that, sir, IAS and IPS and IRS officers are facing so many pol negative political pressures in the lower level as well as higher level. But sir, IFS के बारे में हम लोग नहीं सुन पाते हैं क्योंकि आप लोग थोड़ा दूर सारे point होते हैं. 
तो थोड़ा सा सर आप लोग सर दूरी सारे पॉइंट होते हैं तो सर इसके बारे में सर थोड़ा अपना सर शेयर एक्सपीरियंस सर शेयर कीजिए सर बी फ्रेंक सर बी प्लीज बी फ्रेंक तो uh... मेरे हिसाब से तो काफी एक्सपीरियंस शेयर इसी पे किया गया क्योंकि हम लोगों को भी बहुत ज्यादा जानकारी नहीं रहती है तो ही हेज शेयर द एक्सपीरियंस कि आपको जिस तरीके का ग्लोबल पर्सपेक्टिव ये सब अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं मिलेगी अब ये भी डिपेंड करता है कि काम वही करो जिसमें तुम्हें इंटरेस्ट आता है ठीक है लोगों को अलग अलग चीजों में इंटरेस्ट है किसी आ, जैसे एक ट्रेंड है इंडिया में कि आई है तो उसका एक स्टेटस है स्टेटस आप किसी और के लिए नहीं जियो ठीक है आपको ये लाइफ दोबारा नहीं मिलेगी अपने लिए जियो तुम्हें आई आर अच्छा लगता है आई अच्छा लगता है जो तुम्हें अच्छा लगता है वो करना सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट है ठीक है नेक्स्ट तो ऑब्वियसली मुझे जैसे अभी हम लोग ने इंट्रैक्शन किया ही कि आई और उसमें क्या है कि एक लॉ है आपके पास रिटर्न अथॉरिटी है यहाँ का एक डोमेन ही अलग है जिसमें इंटरनेशनल लॉ है उसको वो सारा ही एडवाइजरी है तो आपको पावर मतलब अब आप ये भी डिपेंड करता है कि आप पावर किस चीज को समझते हो आप पावर इस चीज को समझते हो कि आपने पियोन को बोला और उसने काम किया या किसी छोटे नेता को बोला आपने वो काम किया या आप पावर हर लेवल पे मतलब पावर की आपकी डेफिनेशन क्या है आपने किस तरीके से उसको लिया है कि आपका एक पर्टिकुलर डिसीजन मान लीजिए आप चाइना के साथ ही डील कर रहे हैं उसमें आपने कुछ डील ब्रेक कर दी समथिंग लाइक न्यूक्लियर डील आप घर ब्रेक कर दी एंड व्हाट अ बिग डिफरेंस यू मेक तो चीज बिकॉज ऑफ योर एज वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड कि ये इश्यू है आप उतने लेवल पे नहीं सोच सकते लेकिन जॉब हम तो कह रहे हैं अगर आपको लगता है अकाउंट भी है अगर आपको उसमें इंटरेस्ट है तो ये मानो तुम अप, तुमको अपने लिए जीना बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है वही करो किसी इम, के ऊपर इंप्रेशन करने के लिए कुछ मत करो कि ये मेरे को ऐसे रिस्पेक्ट देगा और वो वैसे देगा ऐसा कुछ नहीं है तुमको खुद को रिस्पेक्ट देनी पड़ेगी अपने जॉब को रिस्पेक्ट दे और फॉर दैट मैटर एवरी वर्क Every work is so organically important for the society. Don't judge a work's importance by its status, which others grant. Rather, you find where your heart is. You will do that work. You will get that recognition. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Uh, good evening. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir. uh we have the same background uh, b uh, electronics so how did you manage to sum up all the eight sems on the day of interview are you grilled on the engineering subjects that is the question i want to ask for the interview yes sir right uh i think for the interview you need not go into all the specific details of what you studied if you mentioned it as a part of your def we have said okay i have interest in computer science then you can be expected some questions but an overall knowledge of what subjects you were taught like microprocessors digital design etc you should know what that uh, subject pertains to what is the subject related to and if they let's say ask you questions you can say that you've read it and your knowledge uh, i believe if it is recent if you i mean graduated last year or maybe 2 years back 3 years back your knowledge is uh, i think objectively would be a little better than them because they would have done those things maybe 25 30 years back uh, so therefore i don't think they will ask very specific questions unless you put that as a part of your def so don't feel worried that they will ask you about a digital circuit and they will invite a question i think their interviews are not like this they fully understand your situation that you've been preparing a different thing and that's difficult to tell because as i said it's uncertain and it it's it's an overall impression they get if they find a weakness in your argument they'll try and stretch you towards that direction uh, or if you or if they feel that you know some answer i mean particular thing they will want to know how far do you know about it so you can't anticipate everything but as ma'am said also for the other thing 
जो चीज़ें प्रडिक्टेबल हैं जैसे डैफ के अंदर हम भरते हैं उस चीज़ों पे आप अच्छे तरह से फोकस कीजिए और मैंने मैं दोबारा वही चीज़ बोलूँगा जो मैंने पहले बोली थी कि यू वुड हैव रिटन अराउंड फिफ्टी नाउन्स इन डैफ नाउन्स विच कुड इंक्लूड प्रॉपर नाउन्स ऑल्सो आप उन फिफ्टी नाउन्स को लेके उनके ऊपर पाँच पाँच छः छः पेज लिख दीजिए वैसे ही विकीपीडिया पर जाइए उसको लिख दीजिए अब क्या है कि वो कोई क्वेश्चन पूछेंगे आपसे ए बी एन सी आपके पास ऑलरेडी फैक्चुअल इन्फॉर्मेशन है ठीक है सो यू से लेट से दे आस्क यू समथिंग अबाउट योर सिटी सो यू विल से ओ आई नो दैट दिस इज दी दीज आर द नंबर ऑफ आई नो द सोशल डेमोग्राफिक्स ऑन दैट बेसिस यू विल ट्राई टू फॉर्मुलेट योर रिस्पॉन्स तो दे विल फील दैट यू आर इन्फॉर्म्ड सी यू बेस्ड योर आंसर ऑन सम फैक्ट एंड देन यू आर पुटिंग एन आर्ग्यूमेंट द प्रॉब्लम इज वेन दैट पीपल आर्ग्यू थिंग्स वेन दे डोंट हैव फैक्ट्स एंड यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू पुट योर सेल्फ इन टू दैट सिचुएशन I I hope it makes sense some sort of sense just क्योंकि देखो interview फिर यही है information नहीं है situation handling है या तो तुमको अपना एक strength बना लो कि information हम दे पाएंगे या हम situation handling कुछ skills देख सकते हैं तो और doable एंड non doable में categorize कर दो कुछ लोग होंगे जिनका बहुत दो ही तीन दिन बाद ही होने वाला होगा इंटरव्यू तो बी प्रैक्टिकल कि ये मेरा डुएबल है ये नहीं है अगर आपसे उसके बारे में पूछा भी जाता है तो देयर कैन बी एन ऑनेस्ट आंसर कि कभी इंजीनियरिंग में सीरियसली पढ़ा नहीं ठीक है और अभी मौका मिला नहीं दस पंद्रह दिन और मिलते तो आई वुड हैव सर्टेनली ट्राइड तो थोड़ी बहुत याद है मतलब उससे क्या होगा ना कि यू विल नॉट बी वेस्टिंग टाइम और वो कोई और एरिया का आप क्वेश्चन पे आ जाएंगे वाइल्ड गेस करना और एडमिट करके मूव ऑन करना तो यू कैन आल्सो सिचुएशन हैंडलिंग करो वहां पे और ये मत सोचो कि आता है नहीं आता है मेजॉरिटी लोग कितना आंसर सुन भी पाते होंगे वो भी एक चीज है तो Try to move on. You can always admit that you can't read. Yeah. So basically, what ma'am said is uh, very, uh, very important for interview thing. Whatever the situation is going in your mind, I think you should be able to use whatever medium that you have and express it to them. Sir, I have read about it, but I can't recollect the specifics. This is what is going in your mind. If you want to say that, you can absolutely admit it in front of them. Sir, I have not heard about it. I am sorry. this you can also tell them so there's no problem they would know that you're being very honest what do you feel about it sir i have some idea of it if you allow me i can speak a little bit more about it but that might not directly correlate to what what you're asking so these are things that you can bring in a genuine frank conversation if you can mold a interview environment in that way which i try to do obviously i was very junior i mean young that time but if you can do that it will they will see you as a mature speaker and and they will give you better marks sir uh, yeah sir whether is it true that uh, despite india being friendly china is being hostile yeah. uh, sorry <laughs> sir whether is it true that despite india's friendly efforts china is being hostile for that uh, you can watch s j shankar's दैट एम ई क्या कली का वो है ना उनका प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस में ही सारा आंसर है है ना थैंक यू सर माई मीडियम इज इंग्लिश सर माई मीडियम इज इंग्लिश बट आई फील अनकम्फर्टेबल वाइल स्पीकिंग इन इंग्लिश कैन आई स्पीक हिंदी इन पर्सनैलिटी टेस्ट वाइल हाँ हिंदी का ऑप्शन है ना पर्सनैलिटी टेस्ट मैम वाइल यूजिंग टर्मिनोलॉजी इन इंग्लिश यस Okay, अब जो है वही करना है उसी में कमाल करना है ठीक है तो लैंग्वेज का नहीं दे वांट टू नो योर आइडियाज और आप कैसे हैंडल कर रहे हैं इंडिया में माना जा सकता है कि एवरीबडी इज नॉट सो प्रिवलेज्ड कि उसको उस लेवल का इंग्लिश ये चीजें मैटर नहीं करती हैं लेकिन आप जो कम्युनिकेट कर रहे हैं गलती से मान लो आपने इंग्लिश वाला ही ऑप्ट कर दिया और उसमें भी नहीं लेकिन मूवमेंट की अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं छोड़ो फिर हिंदी में ही कम से कम बता पाओ एक्सप्लेन करो जो भी तुम्हें इस समय लगता है ना उसको डिसएडवांटेज नहीं समझो वो डिसएडवांटेज नहीं है अपने देश की ये खासियत है ठीक है ओके मैम नेक्स्ट हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून मैम और कुछ था ना इनका नहीं हो गया 
चलिए हाँ बोलो सर माई माई क्वेश्चन वॉज रिगार्डिंग वॉट वॉज योर मोटिवेशन बिहाइंड ज्वाइनिंग द सर्विसेस आई मीन वाई डिड यू वॉन्टेड टू ज्वाइन द सर्विसेस थिंकिंग की कोई मोटिवेशन का रीजन ना हो so uh, my my question is that you said in you have taken a decision now prove yourself theek hai to tumhara khud ka hi motivation hai ki tumne khud ye decision liya tumhe khud hi prove karna chahiye or till your goal is not there wo proof wo karte rehna padega to questions to nahi khatam honge and it has been a very uh, fruitful session very interesting session and uh, i thank uh, anmol for uh, the way he has uh, given us the insight insight about the process i when uh, i have uh, learned a lot like uh, from the perspective of an aspirant we we see from the perspective of a teacher understanding from the perspective of aspirants and uh, also thank you all of you for your interest and the interesting questions so just uh you, you yeah you want to say something yeah one question remaining okay we need to learn how do we know what to ignore and how much depth we need to learn How much depth में पढ़ना है क्या इग्नोर करना है क्वेश्चन एनालिसिस करो ना क्वेश्चन से पता चलता है कि इस टॉपिक के क्या ट्रेंड होते हैं वैसे आई थिंक दे वुड लाइक टू नो फ्रॉम यू देखिए इसका कोई आंसर नहीं है ये तो बहुत ही फिलोसफिकल क्वेश्चन है कि कितना पढ़ना चाहिए और क्या है आई थिंक सिलेबस देखेंगे पांच साल का विल गिव यू अ फेयर आइडिया व्हाट इज एक्सपेक्टेड एंड यू शुड आल्सो फॉर द मेंस Not for the prelims, but mains के अंदर तो proper syllabus भी दिया हुआ है। आपको पता होगा जिस तरह से questions पूछ रहे हैं। Sir, my question is that you said in two months period that you managed a fifteen times revision, and you did mock test also. How you managed it? Because for me, I am doing it for it's my first attempt. I am trying to manage time, but I am getting puzzled in it. So, because uh, I, i have not even practiced for mains mock test i have not practiced even uh, po- political science uh, questions and i am trying to understand but the thing is that i am getting afraid that how will i manage and at the same time i have to manage the gs part also of environment section is certainly left so <laughs> now <laughs> but i first <laughs> सर सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है कि सर प्रिपरेशन के दौरान जैसे टेंशन होता है सर तो आप अपने आप को मस्त कैसे रखते थे एक्चुअली आई द थिंग इज इसको मस्त नहीं रखना आई थिंक यू शुड रियलाइज इट यू आर प्लेइंग विद द फायर ये जो साल होते हैं तेईस से लेके सत्ताईस अट्ठाईस तक लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल सेट देयर करियर्स और अगर आप आपको अपने आप को उस एज में मस्त कर लेंगे तो तो सो सो सर कहने का मतलब मस्त करने का मतलब है कि एग्जाम पे उसका निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट ना पड़े उस टाइप में मस्त कैसे रखें हाँ मतलब एग्जाम पे निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट ना पड़े और आप मस्त भी रह लो टेंशन में इसका सी द ओनली थिंग इज ऑल बैटल्स कैन बी वन इट्स All battles that you have are basically mind battles. तो मन को बताना है कि क्या करना चाहिए अगर आप अपने mind को guide कर सकते हैं कि मुझे इस time पर effort पर ध्यान देना है और मैंने जैसे बोला milestones स्टोन्स आप छोटे छोटे बनाएं 
इस हफ्ते में मेरा ये माइल स्टोन है उसको मैंने कवर कर लिया तो दैट्स अ गुड थिंग फ्रॉम दैट आई टेक इंस्पिरेशन गो टू द सेकंड माइल स्टोन देन थर्ड माइल स्टोन फोर्थ माइल स्टोन स्लोली यू विल फील यार आई एम वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट आई एम फुलफिलिंग ऑल द ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट आई सेट फॉर माई और मेरे में कॉन्फिडेंस भी है कि मैं अपनी सही जो चीज़ें मैंने लर्न की हैं उसको मैं पेपर में रिफ्लेक्ट कर सकूँ बट अगर मान लीजिए आपने कोई ऑब्जेक्टिव सेट किया कि उसको मैं एक हफ्ते में करूँगा एंड एवरी टाइम वेन यू आर अबाउट टू कम्प्लीट दैट थिंग यू प्रोक्रेस्टिनेट नहीं यार डेढ़ हफ्ते में कर लूँगा या दो हफ्ते में कर लूँगा दैट विल नॉट गिव यू कॉन्फिडेंस सो अपने आप को मस्त रखने का एक ही तरीका है कि आपको टारगेट सेट करने पड़ेंगे छोटे छोटे क्वान्टिफाइबल टारगेट्स ऐसा नहीं सिविल सर्विस को टारगेट पूरा ही बना लो वो नहीं छोटा टारगेट वेरी स्मॉल टारगेट I will only do, let's say, chapter one to chapter five of some ABC book, and I will do that in next five days. Fine, and that's a target you've set. If you do that, that's a good confidence booster and incentive for you to keep on working hard. And वो ही आपके अंदर एक positive energy लेके आएगा कि आगे का काम करना. अगर तुम यही सोच रहे हो, यार मैं पंद्रह दिन में करूँगा वही चीज़ जो पांच दिन में हो सकती है, तो फिर आपको खुद ही लगेगा यार मेरा खुद पूरा effort निकला ही नहीं. और एक-एक R important है तो ऐसा नहीं है कि आज मैं पंद्रह घंटे पढ़ा इस तरह से नहीं इट्स अबाउट व्हाट आउटकम यू आर गेटिंग आउट ऑफ इट फोकस ऑन द आउटकम एंड आउटकम यू विल सेट फॉर योरसेल्फ कि मेरा पेपर आ रहा है प्रीलिम्स आ रहे हैं मैंने हर चीज़ रिवाइज करनी है पांच बार प्रीलिम्स जाने से पहले तो मैं उस हिसाब से किस तरह पेस पेस आउट होनी चाहिए चीज़ें तो इफ़ यू डू दैट आई थिंक यू विल ऑल्सो स्टे मस्त एंड यू विल ऑल्सो क्लियर द एग्जाम गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून मैम Uh, sir, whenever we talk about PSIR as an optional, so everyone refers uh, one particular source that is Mam's notes, as of you have said. So let's take an example. If two individual who are writing the mains, uh, that is the optional exam. So let's take an example. There is a question of Plato. So we know that that particular person and I have read Mam's notes only. So what we can do that our answer will become or see as a different from that particular person. This is, uh, in fact, a good question, but I think I allow ma'am to write first, and then I mean speak first. देखो class सब लोग attend करते हैं लेकिन information processing सबकी अलग होती है सबकी personality अलग होती है और तुम्हारी writing skill अलग है idea तो Plato का भी हम ही बता रहे हैं लेकिन हर book में वो चीज अलग अलग ढंग से मिलती है तो same thinker but जब pen पे लिखोगे तो पहली बात क्वेश्चन का इंटरप्रिटेशन बेसिक बॉडी तो वही रहेगी लेकिन तुम्हारा क्वेश्चन का इंटरप्रिटेशन सही है कि नहीं है तुम्हारा क्वेश्चन में सिस्टमेटाइजेशन है कि नहीं है तुम्हारा कॉन्क्लूजन और दूसरे का कॉन्क्लूजन एक एक नहीं होगा तो बहुत सारी चीजें डिस्टिंग्विश कर देंगी और मेन ये नहीं है कि हमारा आंसर उससे अलग कैसे हो हमारा आंसर उससे बेटर कैसे हो प्लस पहले तो सही हो ये ही मिल जाए कि भाई हमने जो पढ़ा वो पेपर में मिल जाए और हमें समय मिल जाए कि हम उसको लिख लें दैट इज आवर फर्स्ट कंसर्न सेकेंड है ये नॉलेज जो है ये बढ़ती जाती है आप जितना उसको टाइम देंगे उतना आपके एक्सप्रेशंस बढ़ते जाएंगे और दूसरे के ऊपर आपका कंट्रोल नहीं है तो आप केवल अपने मैंने कोई आइडियाज बनाया अब इसके लिए आपको खुद ब्रेन करनी पड़ेगी कि हाउ आई कुड हैव पुट इट इन अ मच बेटर फॉर्म इसका ये बेटर फॉर्म हो सकता है ये बेटर एग्जाम्पल हो सकता है ये चॉइस ऑफ वर्ड अलग हो सकते हैं तो वो और वो प्रैक्टिस से वो थिंकिंग से और प्रैक्टिस से ही आता है तो उसके लिए ज्यादा कंसर्न नहीं होना है सभी लोग वही पढ़ते रहे लेकिन सबने पेपर में अलग ही लिखा है वो कभी सेम नहीं हो सकता है पहले तो मैम ने बोला आप आंसर सही दे दें वही सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट चीज़ है आप आइडिया पिकअप कर लें किस थॉट से रिलेट करना है दैट विल डू योर जॉब बट इफ़ यू वांट टू स्टिल डू अ लिटिल बेटर देन दैट देन स्टार्ट आई आई डोंट नो बट स्टार्ट कोडिंग प्रॉपर नाउंस अगर उसने कोई किताब लिखी है इफ़ यू नो मिस आउट ऑन दैट बुक बेसिकली दैट गिव एन इम्प्रेशन कि आपको उस किताब का नहीं पता जिस किताब के अंदर को लिखा है तो वही इन्फॉर्मेशन लोग सभी कन्वे कर रहे हैं बट प्लेटो इन हिज बुक सो एंड सो मैंशन सो एंड सो सो दिस इज हाउ यू बिल्ड दैट थिंक कि ये चीज़ है उसके बाद यू आर ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन इट सो यू टोल्ड दैट एग्जामिनर सी आई नो फ्रॉम विच बुक यू पिक इट एंड आई नो द इंटायर लाइन सम विल विल बी अफ्रेड टू कोट दैट लाइन विच आई थिंक कोटेशन ऑफ इट बट इफ यू कैन यूज इट दैल बी यूजफुल सेकेंड इज स्टार्ट यूजिंग प्रॉपर नाउंस प्रॉपर नाइन नाउंस मीन एग्जाम्पल्स यू शुड हैव अ लॉट ऑफ एग्जाम्पल्स टू कोट 
if ma'am has taught you let's say 10 examples those 10 examples must be in your mind wherever you get a chance just shoot it down in the this thing so that will make sure that you have you remembered all of those examples and you were also at that point uh, were able to quote them down a lot of people what they do is that they feel that saat aat minute hai yaar main kitna hi likh paunga but if you can do justice to what she has taught you i think and if you can reflect that in the exam i think that will uh, take care of it chalo so i think thank you all of you and uh, once again i hope you all enjoyed the session so in future if uh, ever you time permits we would like to meet you again and have uh, another such sessions thank you